I just love them. What draws me to it is actually the excitement of the Bible, new publication as well, but most importantly, Jehovah God. Because when you start talking to the witnesses, you really start to learn a lot from them. Rather, if you're just a guest at a kingdom hall, or you actually become one of them. Which is no problem at all, because honestly, if you actually make this dedication to Jehovah, you're in the right place. Dedication to Jehovah God in any other place is possible. It's just that, you know, you want to make this the right path for others, not just yourself. And pretty much that's what really draw me close to them as well as to Jehovah God most importantly because it, what the witnesses are, are doing is a good thing. What it, they're all about is not in a selfish motive but in an unselfish un motive which is to preach the good news to others, help people the best way they can without offending them, you know? We don't want to give a bad impression to nobody. We just want to save as many people as possible through the Bible, which is the best good news you can ever possibly get. And really, what also draws me to them is, is the way how they do a lot of deep study and research, not just when it comes to Bible scriptures, but to any secular books, on authors and writers who actually admit certain truths as to why the Bible is beneficial, why do certain beliefs sometimes are mistaken to be the true belief, you know what I'm saying? But it really, it really is a good thing that we have Jehovah's Witnesses in this world and that I've met such ones and everybody else is doing the same, you know? Hopefully everybody will be saved one day. Because if not, you know, at least we try. But hey, that's what draws me close to them. The way how they do their work, and also truths found within their publications. Don't you just love how it looks? Don't you just love the words too? My beliefs is in one God, the true God, Jehovah God, compared to what the witnesses believe, as well as salvation for life in the new paradise world. Because at first when I started to know about Jehovah's Witnesses, and this was at a time after high school when I was starting to learn about religion and all that, because uh, I started knowing about religion in high school, but after high school I started, I started to get to know more about religion. And when one of the Jehovah's Witnesses, who is a nice brother from Brooklyn, Dion is his name, cool brother, you should meet him. But when he and his fellow partners knocked on my door the first time, I actually had a nice conversation with them. They even offered offer free literature, can you believe that? They do accept donations, I'll tell you that. But my beliefs also, compared to the witnesses, is how they believe that all shall be saved. Because when I heard about the truth about hellfire, and how all are going to be saved before Armageddon, and not suffer an internal torment and hellfire, that really brought me a lot of relief and attention because always as a kid, as a young boy, and even up to my adulthood now, in my early years, I still, I still believe that everyone should be saved, and, and, no, and that no one deserves to be punished in hellfire, and neither would Jehovah God like that, you know, it's just the, it's just the second death that gets to me, but it's shortly after I'm again all but at least it's not an internal torment. What I really like is people to be saved and that's, that's what my belief is compared to Jehovah's Witnesses as well, that everyone should be saved. And Jehovah God will make sure of it. Hopefully everyone accepts in, in their cooperation and appreciation. Well, that's a good question because I never thought of that at first until it caught my attention after a few meetings with the Jehovah's Witnesses.
Genesis and I realized that it says that Jehovah God created Jesus before all things and that Jesus became his uh, master worker at creating life and the universe as well as beyond and it really and it really touches me in a positive way because I never as a as as a human being, as a kid growing up, I never really thought of those questions, nor the idea of the son being there with God the whole time, or that he was created at first. But I really do believe now that he was created first, because in the beginning when I started to learn about Christianity, I thought that the son was always there with the father from time indefinite before creation when I when I first heard that from a fellow Christian friend who I still talk to preaching the good news he gets it humble guy you should really meet him Oscar is his name but anyways um I actually yeah I actually do believe now ever since I started hearing a few more talks about it that Jesus was first created by Jehovah God just like with any other creature an angel but to this specimen as uh, as, as scientists might say, you know, as some people might uh, refer to this, that to this special one is Jehovah God's, not just his first creation, but his precious one, his most precious, because he is, after all, the only begotten son. Hmm. Wow, that's a uh, tough one from what it sounds. Um, but I'll repeat that question again. Well, basically, please. Thank you. In a way, you said that you know you said that Jesus was created first before everyone and everything else, but you still refer to him as the only begotten Son of God. Whereas mainstream Christians, such as myself, we see begotten as completely different from created. Mm. When you when you recite the I hope I pronounce this right, Nessian Creed, we say that Jesus was begotten, not made. Which tells me that those are two different words with different meanings. So that's what I'm trying to get at. What do you believe in regards to those two words? Do you, you know differences in meaning and similarities in any way? that makes any sense right that makes sense um well what i do believe is that the begotten jesus is the only begotten i understand what you mean though because you said that begotten is totally different correct yes from what i've been taught right well you know jesus in some way i wouldn't say he's different he's just like any other creation that's the only similarity that I can think of and pull out and that I will have to do research on because it's a very interesting question that you uh, pull up for me in advance I appreciate that but what I can say is that, that this fine creation of Jehovah you can say that he's like all other creation which I do believe personally in my opinion but to be honest with you, he's not just any creation. He's a very special one. The first, the first out of God's image. And like I said, that I will have to do research on because there could be more answers to that question. You pretty much surprised me with that. You, you really did, Vance. But I appreciate it, though. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Right, I mean, I can only say this much because that I would have to read up on it more. Well, you know, do research, really. But anyways, um, well, you know, the reason why we believe and say that Jesus is the archangel is because, well, he does have the authority to reveal himself to man. It's just that He's one of Jehovah's God's most bravest sons. Brave, the most brave angel. The bravest of them all. But he's actually more of a son to Jehovah God than an angel. 
Well, that I would have to <laughs> read upon it again and do some research on that because all I can say is that uh, with the scripture with God and a God, um, they do sound different, but I would have to get back to you on that because all I can say now is that we do believe that Jesus is the archangel with the scriptures, a God. Because, like I said, he has absolute authority to reveal himself to mankind. That's all I can say for now. Sorry, folks. You just have to meditate on what you read. Which is good and important. We always do that. I always do that. It's just, you know, when I say more reading, I actually meant, like, deep, deeper research. So there you go. Because if you actually look at the Encyclopedia Britannica, which is actually true, and this I believe also, back in those days, in places like the Middle East and even the Sea of Galilee and all the regions where Jesus preached, they didn't have met much trees. And of course, taking it back to the Old Testament, before the birth of Christ, the cross was indeed used as an act of worship, but not for Christ or Jehovah God alone. It was for another deity at the time. That I wouldn't be so sure, but I do know that the cross was used in worship before Christ came to the earth, before Christianity. And that for the worship of the cross I do know. Whatever deity they were worshipping it to, it wasn't Jehovah God. And like I said, it was used in worship before Christ came to earth. And also, if you used the cross in worship today, it would pretty much be repeating the same pattern as those back in the Old, Te in the Old Testament who did not worship Jehovah God. And they mention a stake too, if you actually read the very first translation of the Bible when it was printed in English from the Middle Ages, and also other original copies of any Bible version, like the King James Version, for example. Like I said, the cross was used and worshipped before, way before Christ came to the earth. The Christ. Well, my thoughts of the Trinity is, I do like its teachings, I'll tell you that. It's just that, well, I would have to say, growing up as a Roman Catholic, I was taught that God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are all three united into one. The whole, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen, or Amen, that's how we used to kiss our closing prayers goodnight every night and even when we used to go to church back in the day but um my belief in the trinity would be it's i wouldn't say it's a story it's more of like a hmm, it's more of a common saying i would have said a common myth but I would say more as a saying because everyone their whole lives, rather if they were born to the truth or not, heard about the Trinity. And my belief is in that is that the Trinity would have to be studied deeper because a lot has been has been taught into this and what some people do say is that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are in one. But what I found out, if you actually read some of the scriptures in the Bible, which I have to memorize because in case if the Great Tribulation comes or some other type of tribulation as the brothers at the talk today annually gave, you know, we have to be prepared because we don't know when we might need to answer some unfamiliar questions. But if you ever read the Bible, like in the book of John, first chapter, it mentions that the word was a God. 
It mentions something like that. I will have to read it again. But I'll honestly say that some scriptures do talk about it, especially when Jesus mentioned that some may put it this way, that Jesus said that, says that I am united with the Father. That's a clue right there that can give some or most the impression that, the, that Jesus is the Trinity. But if you actually take a deeper study into that, you'll actually find out that the Trinity was nothing more than a man-made man doctrine which was not recorded in the Bible in the first place. Not since the Hebrew Scriptures and not since the Christian Greek Scriptures. And I'm not saying that I agree with the Trinity. I could say that I'm denying it. But just to make it more suitable so that everyone can get a better understanding. Whatever your beliefs is in the Trinity, I understand. Mine is the Trinity, I wouldn't say fouls play. I would just say that the Trinity is a new teaching in an alternative way, in a very new way. Because I recently found out that Jesus, Jehovah, and the Holy Spirit are not one figure because if you actually meditate on it especially with the illustrations you'll understand like for example Jesus was sent down by Jehovah God in the womb of Mary to in where he had to sacrifice himself in the last days of his life when he sacrificed himself he cried out to the Father it has been accomplished but nowhere in the Bible does it say that the Father actually brought himself down in the spirit and body of his only begotten Son, thus sacrificing himself. No. Nor does it say that the Holy Spirit was operating in Christ in a way in where Christ was possessed by the Holy Spirit. And neither was God in the form of Jesus Christ possessing the Holy Spirit. So that's uh, one good way of putting it. But that is some good reading to meditate. My beliefs in the Trinity now are different. Oh, very good question. Well, I could explain with Genesis, because it does mention, let us make one. It was in reference to teamwork. Because if you actually read from the four Gospels, like from Matthew, and then refer back to Genesis, with deeper study and studies and meanings applied in your head, you'll realize that it was a that that account was applying to Jesus working alongside Jehovah God in cooperation with making man in the image of God. Now we could have said it could have said in the Bible that. It was made in the image of the Christ also. But it doesn't mention that, just to be more specific. I hope you can all understand. But really, it actually applies to Jesus' cooperation with Jehovah God. And from... I believe you're talking about Philip. Because I remember in the scriptures, it does mention Philip talking to Christ, asking him to show them the Father. And he did say that... Well, he did say that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father also. That's actually in a loving Father and Son bond unity. Some, some do apply that to the scriptures as a proof of the Trinity, but really it's not. It's just an answer from Jesus Christ that was mentioned in the Bible in response to Philip's question. Now, what was that other scripture you mentioned? It's somewhere in the first epistle of St. John, or just plain John. Right. Where he says, I forgot exactly what he was talking about, but he says that there are three that bear witness. The Father, the Word, which is of course the Son if you read the Gospel of St. John, or just John. Right, I'm and, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Mm, I see. That's a good question, my friend. Because, honestly, I would have to say this.
some uh, some render it that way because some have been taught that way even to the extent of actually putting it there in the Bible because not many Bible translations are exactly well I wouldn't say not that many Bible translations are exactly in the same with the word it's not about that really it's just about what you mentioned the Father the Son the Holy Spirit are one so what so what I do so what I could say based on what I've been learning is that some in Christendom in the churches of Christendom actually render the Bible that way as an account proof of the Trinity when in reality if you actually like I said take a deeper study and meditation into this with the scriptures and even with secular books like the Encyclopedia Britannica you'll actually find out that the teachings of the Trinity that the Trinity are somewhat man-made and you can actually see proof of that if you read the history books as well but referring back to that scripture that's a good question it's always important to take that into deeper study, I'll honestly say. The blessings of the Virgin Mary. The beliefs of that is that whenever we mention Mary, Mother of God, we don't do it in prayer. We just do it as a talk to show visitors and even within ourselves, the teachings and proofs that Mary was the mother of Jesus but she was never the mother of God now some churches do render her as the mother of God because of her blessed virginity in her in her giving birth to the Trinity which is God Jesus and the Holy Spirit in one but really it was actually just Jesus alone the Holy Spirit just gave her the ability to be impregnated by God since Jehovah God himself did send Holy Spirit to impregnate the mother Mary but it was with the messenger which was the angel himself I believe it was Gabriel yes but yes about the blessed virgin mother Mary she is blessed to have Jesus Christ and to raise her as her own even though his father is actually Jehovah God in the heavens but the way how some have used her teachings in ways of worship is actually idolatry and we want to stay away from that because only Jehovah God is to be worshipped no one else not even not even Saint Mary or Mother Mary or Mary Mother of God as some put it you know we, we all know her as a simple but humble worshiper of Jehovah God who was given the privilege to bear a, a son, a holy son to her by Jehovah God only to carry out one 